Talking to an animal, whether or not you think it can understand or respond, is your brain acknowledging that it's a living, thinking, feeling creature like yourself. And the more you empathize with your pet, the more likely you are to be sensitive to its needs and give it better care. In the fantasy world of Harry Potter, the language of serpents and those who can speak with them is called parcel tongue. It kind of sounds like a mixture of hissed and whispered nonsense words. In the real world, it's unlikely that snakes can hear whispers at all, but they can hear. And new research suggests they can hear much more than we previously thought. It may sound crazy to some, but I talk to my snakes out of affection and because I have a sense that they could be affected by it and possibly even recognize my voice, especially when I'm touching them. So I thought it might be interesting to explore this real life version of parcel tongue scientifically, philosophically, and therapeutically. Let's slither on into it. Unsurprisingly, there is limited research on exactly what and how much snakes can hear. Up until very recently, studies were conducted on small pools of test subjects, a scant number of species, and were pretty barbaric in their methodology. As usual, there were conflicting conclusions over the years, but the overall consensus was that snakes had very poor hearing or none at all. Now, our ability to hear high frequency sounds is aided by the amplification provided by our external ears, eardrums, and inner ear hairs. Snakes are missing most of those things, but it's kind of hilarious to picture snakes with ears. <laughs> Wouldn't be very functional for them, but it still made me giggle. Anyway, since they lack an eardrum and external ear opening, it was assumed that they could only hear low frequency sound waves that caused air pressure induced substrate vibrations as opposed to higher airborne frequencies. Vibrations were said to either be detected by their jaw bones, which connected to a single middle ear bone, or indirectly through other parts of their bodies. Therefore, if they couldn't feel it, they couldn't hear it. However, a paper published in 2023 by a team at the University of Queensland has disproved that notion and did so without causing physical harm to the snakes in the process. Previous testing methods included dissection, anesthetizing snakes with cocktails of drugs such as fentanyl and ketamine, sticking needle electrodes into their brains and spinal cords, and restricting their movement completely. In a 2019 study, Scientists used those methods to study the hearing of royal pythons, subsequently suspending them in slings hung inside of a Faraday cage, which in turn was inside of a soundproof room, and then subjecting them to various types of sound waves. Pleasantly, the Queensland study conducted their experiments with freely moving captive red snakes of seven different native species and were able to determine that snakes can indeed hear airborne sounds, noting that individual species reacted differently to those sounds. The data from this study suggests that snakes actually have two auditory processing systems, those for low frequency vibrations they hear via their jaw bones and one for airborne sound waves that strike the snake's body, transferring that energy to its tissues, bones, and organs. That vibratory system then translates the vibrations from the rest of its body into fluid-borne vibrations and nerve impulses. Basically, a snake is hearing the vibratory response of its own body as the sound. Funny enough, the sounds that most snakes make themselves, like hissing or huffing, are probably not audible to them. Although there are a few species who emit sounds with frequencies that overlap the hearing range that we've thus far proven that they have. It's thought that since they don't vocalize to communicate with each other, the sounds that they make are for the benefit of warding off potential predators. So they don't exactly need to hear them. Hi. <gasps> the Queensland study showed that snakes could hear airborne sounds equivalent to loud human voices at levels like yelling or screaming. And the lead scientist was quoted saying that it was totally possible that they could hear human voices at an inside voice level, but that they simply hadn't tested for those frequencies. So that leaves a bit of room here to philosophize. If snakes can definitely hear airborne sounds and they do so with their bodies, then what if you're talking to them and holding them at the same time? 
It seems like they'd be able to hear your voice at a normal speaking volume if they're literally on your body while you're talking, because they're not only hearing it through the air, but simultaneously feeling it through physical contact with you. To be clear, in no way am I suggesting they understand language. That's not something I've seen any scientific or anecdotal data on. But I do think it's possible they can recognize your voice, especially in conjunction with their other more acute senses. Whether snakes can recognize their caretakers at all is not up for debate here. There's plenty of evidence that verifies that enough for me. My snakes show clear signs that they recognize me, even as far as showing preference for my touch over another person's. But I hadn't really thought about the audible aspect until recently. So if you speak to them, would it not increase their ability to recognize and trust you? And what about response to your voice? As I mentioned earlier, the Queensland paper showed that different species showed diverse behavioral responses to sounds. Certain species would either move away from or toward the sound, freeze and fear response, tongue flick or periscope to show curiosity, which I just have to acknowledge here is possibly the most adorable behavior snakes do. I mean, come on. The paper suggested that the type of behavior, in particular sensitivity to the sounds, might be aligned with the evolutionary biology and adaptations for each species. So for example, snakes that are active diurnal hunters who are vulnerable to daytime predators might have more sensitivity to airborne sounds and display more cautious or defensive behavior in response to them. Heavier bodied snakes that can't move swiftly might be more sensitive to rumbles of something large that might step on them. So once again, I came back around to thinking about how my snakes respond to me when I speak, and in particular, how when I'm talking to the camera for lengths of time while holding them, they quite often stretch out towards or even climb on and nuzzle my face, which is a display of curiosity and interest. And I like to think affection. They also do this more often when I'm talking than when I'm not. Now, what this actually means, who knows? We certainly don't have any scientific research on it, but I think it's an interesting thing to ponder. <laughs> and while we're pondering, I'll just take a quick second to remind you to subscribe and give the video a thumbs up if it's bringing you any kind of joy or a little something positive to reflect on. If you want a bit more than what's here on YouTube, join the Discord server to chat away with like-minded folks about these topics, and please consider supporting the channel on Patreon. It seems to me that even a small channel like mine can do some good in the world, and as rewarding as it's been so far, it's a lot of work to do for free, so any small contribution towards the mission is very appreciated. Okay, enough of that. Let's get back to the good stuff. Speaking to your pets might be seen as crazy by some, but I'd venture to say that just about everyone with pets does it. Dogs, cats, birds, and even lizards have been shown to recognize words, tones, and specific voices, but there's a therapeutic aspect for humans in talking to animals. Even if you don't believe they understand what you're saying, speaking to them is an act of affection, even a means of socialization and an effort to connect. It can offer a comforting sense of companionship. Hi. Call me the crazy snake lady all you want, but according to behavioral scientist Nicholas Epley, talking to any pet is actually a sign of intelligence. Quote, it's the same psychological process we use to recognize consciousness in other human beings. Anthropomorphism is uniquely innate to humans, and although there are good and bad types of it, I'd say that talking to your animals is not the bad kind because it signifies respect, love, and empathy. We don't talk to toasters, or at least I don't unless I'm cursing it for burning my toast, but talking to an animal, whether or not you think it can understand or respond, is your brain acknowledging that it's a living, thinking, feeling creature like yourself. And the more you empathize with your pet, the more likely you are to be sensitive to its needs and give it better care. This is a pretty important point here. It's no secret that dogs, cats, and other more common pets 
are treated much better by humans than reptiles because we recognize communicative behavior in them that's more closely akin to our own. The generally accepted standards of care for mammalian pets are much more normalized and regulated, their behavior is studied more, and the animals themselves are less persecuted or maligned by society for exactly the same reasons. So unless you're actually expecting or needing a response, I suggest that talking to your snakes is a healthy practice that can increase your sense of connection with and care for them. Whether they return the sentiment is not scientifically proven yet, but just because something isn't proven doesn't mean it isn't possible, especially when we haven't really made an effort to try. And you know what? Even if we did prove that they can't feel a connection to us, there are still clear benefits to both us and to the snake, however indirectly. The simple facts are that one, it feels good, two, it increases empathy, and three, that we now know they can hear us. Those all seem like pretty good reasons to do it, right? So keep speaking your own version of parcel tongue. It certainly doesn't hurt, and who knows? Maybe the next study will show that they actually understand way more than we ever could have imagined. I'm Shira, and this is O'Lauren, <laughs> and we'll see you next time for more snake therapy. <laughs>